Ron reckons they hardly ever eat indulging us. Big Ron, Big Bush Ron. <laughs> Big Ron reckons they live on Barbies out there. Uh, Barbie, by the way, is Oz speak for barbecue. Oh. Big Ron. Big Ron reckons the only time he's indoors in Oz is to have a shave or to have a kit. Look, since you're so bloody determined to give me GBH of the Luggos about this Big Ron, make yourself useful and knock them tops on here. Yeah, good, good, good. See, they've got the weather. Most of the year is summer. So it's only surprising, like Big Ron says, that your average Australian has got a sunny, outgoing disposition. He's a fair dinkum, all-round sportsman. He's as tough as a swag man's outback boot and is generally bursting with good health. Big Ron. Big Bush Ron. Get that butter. Let's rub some of this. Oh, it's this killer plum climate, Dory. They're going to bin me. And ship me back to Wars in a wooden overcoat unless I get away from here. Oh, you'll be all right in a couple of days. <coughs> Come on, let's get some on your back. <coughs> Big Ron says it's not true that Oz is a cultural wasteland. I mean, it's the Sydney Opera House for a start. Um, well, all them magic films. Crocodile Dundee. Um, Crocodile Dundee 2. And there was that television series about a kangaroo. Up along Dundee. Just reaching out, a fire. <laughs> what are you about? Fire crews from all over East London are being called to a blaze in a warehouse complex off the Mile End Road. Part of the complex is used for the storage of dangerous chemicals, and residential premises in the immediate area are being evacuated. Cool, that's a good working job. Trixie Day, the much enough star of the long running soap, Suds. Hey, Nelly Melba. She was 84. Yes! Hang on, Kevin. It's only our pump to stand by at Stratford for fire cover. Stratford? Yeah. But the night, as they say, is still really young. Too true, Gavin. Come on. Lucky bastards. That's a 20 pumper. Boy, what I wouldn't give to get stuck into that, eh? What do you want to get stuck into a big fire for? Aren't you sooty enough? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that's enough. Best behaviour, lads. After all, Stratford is the North East Area HQ. I'll book us in, Gaff. Okay. Welcome aboard the Murray Celeste. Jammy baskets. They're all down at Mile End, and I bet you we get stuck in this morgue all night. Getting intimately acquainted with our belly buttons. Well, the top priority has got to be grub. Mm. Mm. Bit tasty, this place, isn't it? It's well designed. Right. Better than Blackwall. Oh, dear, yeah. Sorry. 
big that is. Come on, you go. Look at that. Now for the tea. Hmm. Well, it answers my question. It was bangers and chips. Good bit, Kip. Big Ron reckons they hardly ever eat mince in Oz. Well, except in burgers. Mind you, burgers are as big as dinner plates in Oz. Right! Charisma! I'm warning you! One more mind-numbingly boring observation about your sister's current activity and hunt or the Oz way of life and so help me. I'm going to fill you full of bubbles. Oh, all right. Now, focus in. Do you know for us? Yeah. What's all this about a nuclear container leaking a chicken? It is, it's leaking. What, and chicken? Yeah. yeah. Well, what's this chicken mean then? Well, how do I know what the ticking means? Who am I? I only drive the bleeding thing. And I demand immediate decontamination. All right, all right. I appreciate that you're bricking it, but I'm just trying to ascertain the situation. Now, where is it? Over there. Well, it's not ticking very loud, is it? Now, look, this is very, very important. From what I remember, that container's made of concrete. What you're saying is that the lead flask inside it must have cracked and is leaking irradiated water. Look, I've told you I don't know nothing about it, except if it leaks, I get fried. I only drive the thing, and all he does is sit by me while I drive him. OK, let's have a butcher's at it. Bring me a powerful torch. Not me, pal. I'm not going near that. The only reason me and him are hanging around here is to get decontaminated. I've got an old woman at home, just had a pacemaker fitted and a three-month-old lurcher, and I don't want them contaminated either. Why aren't we being decontaminated? We don't even know if you've been contaminated yet. Well, you're mad going near that thing, you're going to get contaminated. Oh, don't worry about him. He's all right, Jack. He's in the right job, him. He'll make sure he gets bleating decontaminated. Yeah. What's the name? What's the name? <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? Sorry, sir. The joke. I get the feeling that I'm missing out on something. There's no joke that I know of, sub. Do you know of any joke the sub might be missing out on? Porky? No, Scouser. You've got two minutes. Then I want you to finish testing that hose and I want it back in the store. Far be it from me to spoil the little surprise we've got in store for you. Monkey nuts. Look, 
Look, what are you doing? Look, I never said anything to the sub, right? It was him who called me in. Told you. Button it. Get lost. You're getting a lesson. You've got to learn to keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> the sub's going to do his nut if he comes out and sees that hose still not loaded up. Piss off, Porky. Yeah, but it's not just you that's going to get it in the neck. I think the Porky wants to get spit roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get him I in. Need the sound. <laughs> hey, what are you not doing? <laughs> Come, Come on, on let's swim in. What are you doing? Get him over there. Oh, that's that's you idiot. What are you not doing? Hey, keep your wool on, Shotty. It's only a bit of fun. Well, let go of us. <laughs> hey, stop it, will ya? Send a priority message to mobilising control. Radiation suspected. And when you've done that, I want the pump and everyone move right up there, right upwind of it. Right, you two, get rigged up in your CPSs. Now, Josie, you know the rules regarding women and radiation. When you've helped rig the lads up, I want you out the front to warn civilian vehicles and direct our lot in. Oh, and uh, Bailey, get onto the ops room. We want a scientific advisor and a radiation protection specialist here pronto. Yeah, but listen, when are we going to be decontaminated? Now look, if you've been contaminated, you'll be decontaminated. Meanwhile, if you are contaminated, I don't want you any more contaminated. So go over there, where the pump's going, right upwind of it, and keep Oh, now this is no good to me, pal. I'm making a complaint against you. Your top priority ought to be safety of the public. Me and my oppo have been here for ages waiting to get decontaminated. Now, look, I'm warning you. You're winding me up. Now, get your bums over there, like I said, keep your wigs on and belt up. What I am doing is my job. Okay, boys, up and out. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. hey. hey. How's that, nice. lad? Hey. So you um, like to drink it all up, or you drown in it? <laughs> <laughs> Me and the lads are going for a smoke. When you've drunk it all, give us a yell. <laughs> Let me out, star, sir. For God's sake, I never told them anyone. Hey, don't crack yourself. It's only our little joke. Consider it your initiation into the watch. That's so, me and the boys will go and have a smoke, and we'll leap you to your rescue. Promise. Let me out! minutes and then we'll let him up. Then we better get that hose back in the store. Actually, I don't altogether hate the little bastard. <laughs> 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 This mile in shouts delaying everyone. Yeah, including the boffins from the CGB if they're coming from central London. They got to get through the mile in snarl up. Have you ever been on the show? Oh, well, here we go. Right. Don't try and be heroes, boys. It's funny the way some persons are always droning on about job equality, innit? When it comes to a job like this, they just ain't got the balls for it. Yeah, if 
that flask really is leaking radiation, your balls are going to glow in the dark. If you've got any, that is. For God's sake. Right, I'm taking over. He's breathing, but not conscious. This is just the formalities, age, name, address, etc. Uh, which hospital are you taking him to? We'll take him to Guy's. Oh, there's his address. You'll see to the yeah. next one. Where were you when all this was going on? Well, I was in here. But I was on the blower most of the time. I never saw nothing. I mean, I knew the lads were having a bit of a lark. You better get young Maddox's mum's phone number for me. So area staff can tell her his mates almost killed him and may have brain damaged him while they were having a bit of a lark. Get staff on the line for me. I'll take the calls in the office. Sub. The incident's through there, sir. Oh, what the bloody hell is he doing all the way out here? Well, I suppose all the senior officers who are halfway sane are at mile end up. Excuse me. Are you top brass here? I am. Right. I wish to make a complaint against this geezer here. I thought your top priority was supposed to be safety of the public, and yet when I, as a member of the said public, expressed concern about the safety and continuing health of me and my oppo here, owing to the fact that we haven't been decontaminated yet, I was told to shift my bum, keep my wig on and belt up. Did you say that, Mr Tate? Yes, sir, because, uh... Boom. Wig on. Belt up. Sign, put your name and address and phone number on that. Sir, with respect, sir, the gun might have used something like them words, but I'm sure the tone was entirely jocular, sir. This is a very serious complaint that this gentleman is making, Mr. Tate. What sort of picture have you painted of the London Fire Brigade? Is courtesy towards the general public really too much to ask for? Have a look. I might not have done a very good PR job here, but I have got other much more serious considerations. 
I've got a supposedly leaking nuclear container over here that is also ticking in a very highly populated area. Didn't it occur to you to move it? Yes, it did occur to me to move it, but I've got a driver here who won't go near it even if you put a ten-ton squib under it. I'm hard-pressed to know where to move it to in a very highly populated area that wouldn't put just as many people at risk. And if that flask is cracked, and I did get that train moved, all I would have achieved is to spread the contamination around and exacerbate the situation. Now, what I've attempted to do is contain the incident, limit any possible damage, and alert my crew so that they are ready to assist when the ERTs and the boffins turn up. You have my word that your complaint against this officer will be looked into. Good evening, gentlemen. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Adios case, Blackwall. Now, what I've got here is a nuclear container with a supposedly leaking flask that is also ticking. As you can see, I've taken all the normal precautions and contained the situation waiting on your arrival and expertise. Sprinkler impressions, that was all right. Glass of any old white wine. Right. Is um Roland in tonight? No, he's not in every night. He only fills in occasionally. Yeah. I know what Roland's occasionally is. When it suits him. In my time I've had a belly full of his bloody occasionallys. I don't suppose you know his home address? No. But a manager might. Do you want me to ask him? Please. Sir, there's no leak of radiation. Thank God. It's just rainwater. Well, what about the ticking? This Geiger counter must have been accidentally dropped and left on the container when it was being checked at Bradwell. Hey, right, there's been no leak of radiation. How come that thing's still ticking? Background radiation, I sincerely hope and trust. Because if that thing had leaked, coupled with the 20 bumper at Mile End, the brigade's resources would have been severely stretched. And, of course, a lot of lives could have been lost or considerably cut short. And you could have written off most of London for the next 300 years. Uh, I've left everything as it was, sir. Right. Order a brigade photographer. Oh, 
stick the kettle on. Nice one. I'll put this in with no BA. Mike, I passed my leading handwritten exams I heard this morning. Hey, how about that? I'll be doing the junior officers course at Southwark. Well, this course for a real celebration. You ought to be doing all this acting up like, not me. How about a nice steak and a bottle of wine round my place tomorrow night? Uh, well, tomorrow's out, actually. Claire? Yeah. Well, never mind. Well, uh, what about the night after? All right. I'll expect you around eight. Have we got any news of the lad? Uh, no. No, to be honest, sir, I have never bought her in the hospital. He was still unconscious when he left here, and, uh... I don't exactly remember how long the brain can live without oxygen. Not long. How long has he left underwater? I haven't had a chance to talk with the lad, sir. For a start, I'm too wound up, and I didn't think it was wise, cos you'll want to be setting up an inquiry. I thought we'd managed to put a stop to this initiation ceremony business. I mean, we all appreciate the lads like a bit of fun. They can get very high-spirited, but this accident has bloody well taken things to the limit. Well, that's the point. I'm not sure this was an accident, sir. There's a detail I left out when I was on the phone to you earlier. Diamond Maddox is black. And to the best of my knowledge, he's been subjected to a considerable amount of racial harassment from the other members of the watch. I did my best to put a stop to it, but all I did, it seems, was make it worse for him. When you say not an accident... Well, he had another near accident a few weeks back. Us at Blackwall met up with this lot on a job, and Maddox couldn't go into the blaze, because at the last minute we discovered his DSU was missing off his BA. The thing is, he checked it himself just a bit before. It could have dropped off. Well, that don't happen easy, sir, and what with tonight, it's a bit of a coincidence, to say the least. Now, let's get this clear. Are you saying what almost caused his death tonight were, in fact, acts of deliberate malice? Because if you answer in the affirmative, and that is a very serious allegation... No, don't answer that. This conversation is at an end. This incident is subject to fire service discipline regulations, and will be subject to a report to the Brigade Investigating Officer. Is Roland in? Who's asking? Tell him Marion is first wife that was wants an urgent word with him, will you? Well, if you want an urgent word with him, you're going to have to hire a sniffer dog and find him, because he's not in. And if you want any cash out of him, you can pig him well forget it. Because you and that cow Marion he married for the second time have just about bled him dry. He's got me now and the kids. Listen, I've never had a brass farthing out of him since I walked out on him and went to Hull. It's not what you told me. 30 quid he's been sending you every month and 40 to the other one. The bloke's a born liar. He's been telling you that so he's got an excuse to keep you short. I was never granted any maintenance from him. All he owes me is 500 quid, which was half the key money on the rented flat we had. Oh, you're a mug, you are. Do you want to get wise to him? Sorry, love, I don't know your name. Marion. Look, uh, Marion, I was, uh, I was just going to make a cup of coffee. Do you want my love? Attempted murder? You must have been off your nut. And you've heard from the hospital. He's not dead. He's not brain damaged. He's OK. Why the hell couldn't you have waited? The fact that he's now OK is not the point, is it? The point is... Not the point is there's going to be an inquiry. And it's going to find it was all down to innocent hijinks. So you can kiss any chance of promotion you had goodbye because you're going to be laughed out of the service. Why did you have to make waves? Because I know it wasn't bloody innocent hijinks. I know that someone in that watch really had it in for him. Now, what the hell am I supposed to do? Bury my head in the sand? I don't see why not. Because you must know, even if it wasn't innocent hijinks, everyone else will. Sandra, I've got complete faith in the disciplinary system within the brigade. Oh, John, you are absolutely pathetic. <sighs> I've had no contact with him for ages. The only way I traced him was I bumped into this bloke who used to know him. Said he'd seen him working at some garden centre. So I went there, but he wasn't there. But a bloke there said he occasionally worked at this wine bar. So I went there, and that's where I got this address. I knew it was no good me going to Blackwall. Talk about closing ranks, they're worse than the bloody Cosa Nostra. I never knew he was working at no garden centre. Listen, love, I never knew where he was or what he was doing when he was married to me. He must be picking while coining it in. So where's all the cash going? Because not coming to me or the kid. I suppose he is as highly sexually motivated as ever. 
The bloke's a prime candidate for chemical castration, isn't he? God, I don't know a thing about gardens, sweetie. We've always lived in apartments. I always had someone to do the window boxes, but now we've moved into this barn of a place in Holland Park with a ginormous garden. Uh, though I do hope to find a strong young man to transform it for me. I do quite like the idea of choosing the plants myself. Perhaps you would assist me, sweetie? Well, I'll certainly do my best, sweetie. Oh, don't be naughty. I don't mean what you mean. I mean strictly in the horticultural sense. How do you know what I mean? You're blushing, sweetie. Oh, my God. I just think that all I had on my mind a minute ago was potent tillers. in the lap of luxury. Here's me, I can't even afford to get my shoes sold and healed. And that sprout in the second hand pram. Don't upset yourself, love. He's not worth it. I can't help it. It broke my heart, and it. Oh, come on, don't upset yourself, love. I would never have bothered you except I'm out of a job. I was made redundant from the customs and excise in Hull. Well, there was no other work for me up there, so I had to come back. But I'd like us to get retrained. So where are you stopping? I've been in this crappy bed sitting in Paddington for six weeks, but I'm flat broke now. I can't meet the rent out of my unemployment. And because I'm not supposed to have spent my redundancy money, even though I have, I don't yet qualify for housing benefit. So unless I find cash to pay the rent, I'm out on the streets. That's why I've come in the hope that I can get at least some of that 500 quid back. Bastard ever at it. You can bet your bottom dollar is spent it. You know what we are? We're his victims. You're not kidding. Why should we suffer because of his unnatural drives? I'm not letting you get kicked out on the streets. You can move in here with me if you like. Dominic, Bert. Excuse me. Bert. Bert. You're not being very sociable, are you? I don't like him. You don't know him. He's only just moved to the area. He's taken over managership of that building society around the corner. He was a member of WAPS. WAPS? Woking Operatic Players. Stupid. Now he wants to join POPS, but he's got to audition. Anyway, the producer rang last night and asked me if I'd help him with his audition piece. And as Mum's got the kids this morning, I said I'd be happy to oblige. Now, you are quite capable of making yourself a cup of tea. Your electric blanket's on if you want your 40 winks. 
We'll keep it down. We'll be ever so quiet. Promise. Now, Dominic, we'll take it from the top, shall we? Don't mind me. Just pretend I'm not here. One, two, three. You and the night and the music fill me with flaming desire. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Sorry. Carry on. Now, Dominic. On fire. You and night and the music. music. Mike, we've been sitting here like a couple of lemons for an hour and a half. We might as well face it. The city stood me up. Can't you give her a bell? She's not on the phone. Foiled again. I'll get us a takeaway. Come on, you two. Time for bed. Oh, Mum, can we watch the end of this? No, no. If you watch the end of this one, then you'll want to watch the end of the next one. Just because you and him want a snog. Snog? Snog? What's snog? It's what Alison Bishop at school wants to do with him. Oh, I see. Just because he snogs, he thinks everybody else does. How old is this Alison Bishop? Eleven. The girl is seriously underage, Peter. What are you thinking of? Come on. Will you come up? Yes. Or a snog. <laughs> if only we could. I'll tell you what. Mm. Next time you get your parents to sit, we'll go round to my place. <laughs> mum, mum, he's smashing up all my models. Respects for you. Um, what do you mean? In what piggy respect? I haven't seen you since yesterday morning. I never saw him for three weeks once when he was married to me, and I never did find out where he'd been. You'll never find out where he's been tonight. What is she doing here? She's stopping here. Do what? Oh, she, what do you mean she's stopping? You bastard! You've been on the nest, haven't you? No. You... No. I found it outside on the step. Didn't want you to find it and be offended. I'll tell you what offends me. You offend me! Thinking right, I was born Marianne. yesterday offends Marianne. me! Now you have to see it offends me! The fact that you uh, keep me short and the spread of my second hand crowd offends me! The fact no, that you no, never do right by me! Oh, cow you ever married Preach. offends me! The fact that you got the moral to a sewer rat offends me! Give me one of the nuts for me, Marion! You bastard! <laughs> Have I told you not to call me mum when Big Ron's around? Sorry. It's just that my compensation checks finally arrived from the brigade. It's a thousand quid. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as soon as he's back on his feet, me and Big Ron are going for an almighty piss up with the lads. <laughs> I was just on my way to point the python at the plumbing <coughs> when I thought I heard someone say something about an almighty piss up. As soon as you feel fit enough to meet the lads, Big Ron. And it's my treat. Leslie, mate. 
tell the lads to prepare themselves to be drunk under many tables. Oh, by the way, that mile end sharp. We missed a real good working job there, all right. Them warehouses were totally gutted. Oh? How would you know? Oh, just happened to be passing yesterday morning. I wonder how many other off-duty firefighters just happened to be passing. Well, judging by the size of the traffic jam they caused, I'd say about 2,000. I suppose when you've flown through your junior officers course, you'll get your sub-officers and then your station officers. Well, I've got nothing to stop me now. got nothing and no-one else to consider, have I? Set me in the job. I've often wondered how the lads would react to taking orders from a woman's station officer. It's never been tried yet, has it? It's not a crusade I'm on, Mike. It never has been. No. You think it has? No, I bloody don't. Listen, I've always been on your side. Yeah, I know. <sighs> anyway, what are we talking shop for? That's the first thing we said when you walked in here tonight. No shop talk, we said. Maybe shops will we got left in common now. What the hell is up with you? What's this rotten, stinking atmosphere doing between us all of a sudden? All right. I would never have dreamed of asking you here if I'd known this business between you and Claire had got so far off the ground. Why not? Because... Well, how would she feel if she knew you were here tonight? She does know. I told her and she feels fine. Well, a lot of women wouldn't. Yeah, well, Claire's not a lot of women. She's confident in herself. A lot of women aren't, Joseph, and that's why they've got no confidence in their men. And a lot of men have got no self-confidence, and that's why they've got no confidence in their women. As you of all people should know. Claire's attitude is, why should I jack in an old friend, who I'm very fond of, just because I found a new one? Even if the old friend just happens to be a woman. Sounds quite a girl. Yes, she is. She's a bit like you. Nice looking. Independent. A bit older, of course. You'd like her if you met her. Well, you obviously like her a lot, so I'll be bound to like her. You gonna get together? Oh, well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? We'd like to get together and sort of see if we could get together. But we've got three kids between us. She can't get a sitter. So. Getting a bit of privacy is like climbing K2. Well, you know what they say. Nothing like sex to spoil a beautiful friendship. So when's the discipline hearing going to be held in? I don't know. There's an inquiry going on now. Strictly between you and me, I've heard on the grapevine, Desmond Maddox isn't all that keen on having an issue made of it. And for the life of me, I really don't understand his attitude. Well, he's obviously got no faith in the system, has he? He thinks a blind eye is going to be turned. And the blokes that done it to him will probably just get a caution and be told not to be naughty boys again. <laughs> yeah, that's what Sandra thinks. She reckons I should have kept my trap shut. Uh, that's what a lot of blokes are going to think. Not in this watch, but 
Anyway, I was there when a DSU incident happened. So if you need me as a witness, thanks. Hunt him full of painkillers. <laughs> You'll never get him off there. Bailey, Senga. Let's get moving. Oh. You'd seem a bad sort of day. I thought I'd stick about for a bit. Signo, get down the basement and support his legs. Yeah, well, stick about a bit longer, son. You'll be okay. God, shall I get on the phone? Wait a minute. What's your name, mate? It's Tony. Get his legs. Well, I bet they call you Curly. Yeah. Bastards. Ever since I was being high. Ah. Well, don't worry, mate. They'll be calling you Curly when you're 65. No, man. I'm bugged. No, man. Listen, Curly, listen. Look, we've got blokes out of worse fixes than this. You'd be amazed. Honest. Poor boy's a right off, isn't he? If he doesn't die of his injuries, he'll die of loss of blood. Look, why don't you shut up, you stupid old cow? You tell me to shut up. I'm a doctor's receptionist and I know what I'm talking about. Tony. Oh. just like to say thank you all for trying to help our lad in his last moments. Thank you. It, it was Tony had the most to do with him. He never suffered, did he? No. He was a very brave bloke. He was my only son. 